everybody. Today I am going to be reading you another story. Let's have a look at what we have over here. We have got some wellies, some trainers, some more trainers, some slippers, some boots. Well, we have got lots of shoes. I wonder what the story is about. Let's have a look. The story is called The Elves and the Shoemaker. Now I can see the elves, they're working very hard making some shoes. I wonder what the story is about. There was once a poor old shoemaker who lived in a little cottage in the woods. One evening after supper, he told his wife that he was unhappy. I am working so slowly now that I am old. He explained, I am worried that we will starve. Oh dear, he's worried that they might starve. I only have enough leather to make one more pair of boots, he went on. I do not know what will become of us then. There he is, feeling very sad and very unhappy. I wonder what he is doing. <gasps> he's pulled out some leather. But I don't think that is enough to make some shoes. He might need some more things. After supper, the shoemaker went to his bench. He cut out the leather pieces so that they were ready to make into shoes the next day. There he is, cutting the leather. And he has cut all the pieces. The old shoemaker was so tired from working all day that he fell into a deep sleep. <sighs> the next morning he seemed to remember that he had heard strange noises from his workroom, but he told himself that he must have been dreaming. Oh, he did wake up middle of the night thinking, wondering who could it be? He could hear some noises. But when he sat down at his workbench, he had a big surprise. A pair of fine boots had been made from the leather pieces that he had cut out the night before. Look at these, he showed the wife. They would have taken me at least three days to make. The stitching is exquisite, she agreed. Beautiful. Look at this shoe. Wow, someone has already stitched the shoe and made the shoe. I wonder who it could be. Look at that. Look at the design. Looks very pretty. The shoemaker put the boots in his, in his shop window. Before long, a rich man arrived, asking to try them on. I love them, he congratulated the shoemaker. I must have them. Name your price. And he gave the shoemaker a truly handsome sum in solid gold pieces. There they are. The shoemaker is holding the gold pieces. They are worth a lot of money. We are lucky indeed, the shoemaker told his wife. We can afford to eat today and I can buy some more shoe leather as well. to the market and came back with plenty of good food and enough leather to make two more pairs of shoes. In the evening he cut the leather into pieces before going to bed, ready for an early start. However, in the morning he found, to his surprise, not one, but two pairs of shoes. There they are. They are just as fine as the first pair, said the wife. Who has done this kind deed? I wonder who it could be. Who was being so kind and helping the shoemaker? Oh, he's opened the door to see if he can see anybody. There's no one there. No sooner were the shoes put in the window than friends of the rich man knocked on the door. They loved the shoes so much that they bought them on the spot. And so it went on. 
The shoemaker bought more leather every day. He would cut it out and leave it on his workbench at night. Every morning he would discover the most beautiful shoes and boots which would be sold before lunchtime. Look at all these leather pieces. They are turned into boots. Like magic, isn't it? One evening, the shoemaker was sitting in front of the fire with his wife. I would like to know who has been helping us, he said. Why don't we sit up and watch instead of going to bed? They hid themselves behind the curtain and watched still as mice. There they are. They're hiding behind the curtain. Towards midnight, the window sprang open and two little elves climbed through, dressed in rags. In an instant, they sat upon the shoemaker's bench and picked up all the leather pieces that were cut out. There they are, the two elves. So they were helping the shoemaker. They began to pull and stretch the leather, stitching it and tapping it, their fingers racing faster than the shoemaker had ever seen. In no time at all, four pieces of shiny boots and shoes were standing on the bench. Then, quick as a flash, the two elves were gone, rubbing their blurred eyes. The shoemaker and his wife crept up to bed. There they are, the shoes. They have made one, two, three, four pairs of shoes. The next morning they could hardly believe what they had seen. How can we repay them for helping us? wondered the shoemaker. Let's make them some proper clothes, suggested the shoemaker's wife. Good idea, agreed the shoemaker, and I will make them each a pair of boots too. There she is, she's sewing them some new pair of clothes. Oh, look at that. Looks like a little waistcoat that she has sewn. Very cute. And the shoemaker has made some little tiny shoes. When the elves came in later that night, they went, they went straight to the workbench to begin work, but found the little clothes and boots instead. There they are. Look at all these clothes and shoes the shoemaker and his wife have sewed. They both burst out laughing with delight, took off their old rags and admired their new outfits in the mirror. They danced and capered about, chuckling at how splendid they looked. They are so happy. And they're wearing their new clothes. At last, they clambered up to the window and jumped deep into the night. The old couple never saw the elves again, but sometimes when they need help, they will leave some leather pieces on the bench. From time to time, the old man will put out a little jacket or a shirt or a pair of small shoes, and in the morning, they will be gone. Who do you think takes? Their small tiny clothes that are sewn by the shoemaker and the old woman. That's right, I think it's the elf too. The elves, I really like their clothes and they're so kind, aren't they? That made me so happy. I really like this story and I hope you have enjoyed it too. Take care.